everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 3 of Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. So I came back here to the beginning of Summer Forest just to go under this water. Now I want to see if I can get a vase to not fully break again like it did in the first episode just to show you guys what I mean by they don't always break properly. Also another thing about this game is these gems aren't actually on the ground. A lot of the gems in this game kind of float or hover which means that the ground textures weren't done properly. Which is fine, I guess. Also, in a very few select levels of this game, orbs can just be found laying around. Also, fun fact is you can sit on top of these portals. Yeah, I, I don't know why that's even a fun fact, this doesn't really do anything, but whatever. Oh, this water here? I don't really like this water. This just looks weird and it's hard on the eyeballs. Also, that did not look like gems. Another thing with the Reignited Trilogy that the original didn't have was Sparks a lot of the time doesn't like to pick up gems. His gem pickup radar is malfunctioning, to say the least. Also, was that a gem or am I just going weird? No, okay, no, it's just grass. It's so blurry down here that it's just, I don't know, hard to pick up. I swear I always miss gems in this water, so I'm just being cautious. Once again, you cannot actually 100% this level until you get to the next home world, so bear in mind you can't actually get all the gems here. Which for people with OCD might not be the best thing. So just just keep that in mind. If you have OCD. Also to open these doors, flame these. Or you can charge them, doesn't really matter. Um You're well, oh. you're well on your way. Just telling you to do exactly what you did. She'll just say there's something shiny up there because there's an orb and the last of the few gems. And what I mean... See, what I mean about Sparks not picking up gems, that's what I mean. Where he just literally did not pick it up. But anyways, I was going to say, there's only literally a few gems up there. Like, I mean, there's maybe ten altogether. Maybe eight. Also, there's a blacked out portal. Those are what your orbs are going to be for. If, also, if you want all the orbs here, you're going to have to glide around over here and fail miserably. Oh yeah, money bags. Say, Spyro, you see this wall here? I bet you're dying to know what's on the other side. If only I had a few more gems, I might be able to remember how to lower the wall. Ugh, 400 more gems, fine. Ah, yes. The sparkling beauty of those gems seems to have jogged my memory. Yeah, yeah, Aquaria Towers, a completely water-based level. And the only one of its kind in any Spyro game, which is interesting, to say the least. I'm not complaining, because water levels in Spyro aren't the greatest. Especially with the updated graphics where they, like, change the, uh type of water. Also, this is the boss door. There's one in all three worlds. You need all the talismans to get there. And then the final one, you need a specific amount of orbs, which, like I said, is like 12 or something like that. So it's very minuscule. And honestly, it doesn't take that much effort. Now, you can technically flame that one, but then it locks the door you actually need to get through. So what you want to do, like I said before, is glide over here. Grab these few Sacrificio gems, and this. And we should only be missing... Okay, there's 15 gems, which I think are all up... No, never mind. I was right. There was 10 up there. Aha, because there's the last five. Nice. So, now we can go take on Huracos. And then we'll take on Aquaria Towers, because that'll be the only other level we can 100% complete. So, let's go to Huracos. Which used to have Tom Kenny voicing a lot of characters here, too. But that changed with the remake. <laughs> yeah, those guys look kind of mean, don't you think? Also, you have to collect these little guys to get through the doors. Well, let's talk to this Electrol. We've always had trouble with the gear grinders, but now they've set up force fields to separate us. If you find diodes, you can use them to turn off the force fields. I think there's a diode around here somewhere, uh, but my eyesight isn't what it used to be. You mean because your glasses are filled with electricity? Um, 
Also, why would all this technology be in a permanently stormy zone? Doesn't sound like a good idea. But whatever, I always thought it was cool to live in like a rainy place like this that had like all this cool advanced technology that was like immune to the uh... The water and storms and stuff. So there's a skill one for destroying all those windmills if you're wondering why I keep destroying them and them not dropping anything which makes them sound like they're pointless. But they're not, they're actually useful. So the gear grinders are actually pretty smart. They remind me of Norks though, like look wise. But they can build robots, which I thought was actually pretty talented for something that is normally just a stupid goon. Also, there's 400 gems and 3 uh, orbs. I don't know why I go over them every time, because the only thing, like I said, that changes is the orb count, and they normally only change between 2 to 4. So, there's not that many. Anyways, looks like we have to go this way. I think I missed something, though. I'm... Yeah, I did. I knew there was a little loop around. This part here can be a little obnoxious to get to, though, because if you don't glide just right, you'll fall down and die. And then there's gems over there, but we can't get there quite yet. That is at the end of the level. Zoe through the halfway point of opening this bridge is kind of weird. You think she'd be, like, right here, not where she was, but I'll take it. Checkpoints are checkpoints. Luckily, your flame breath is very reactive in this game, so even if they're like right above your head with the wrench, you probably won't take damage as long as you use your attack on them. Now, one of the first orbs we can get is actually over here, through that tunnel right there, but we're going to clear out this little room before we go and get that. Also this, we can't do anything about these, can't do anything about yet, uh, I guess I can show you flame breath on them, it doesn't do anything. So that's a thing. You actually need to defeat a lot of enemies around here too to actually progress. So make sure you kill everything. There is a lot of enemies in this level, honestly. This is actually one of the more enemy-filled levels, same with Aquaria Towers. Some of those have very few, some have a ton. I guess we'll open up this. Oh yeah, Zoe's right there too, which is good. And that'll open up this door too. Well, let's go back and do this challenge, which, funny thing is, you could cheese it in the original. Like, it wouldn't be any easier, per se, it's just, this one's more time-consuming. So what you gotta do, is you gotta actually defeat these guys, but you don't actually need to activate anything, which I found out in this game. In the original, you actually had to throw these in to start them, like, you know, up. But in this game, you kill one on one side, like, we just killed one to the left, now one will be on the right. And that was not how it was. These guys would only show up when you put these little diodes into the, um, or uh, thunderstones, I think they're called, into the machines, and then they'd steal them. And the more you had up and running, the more they'd steal, so you could spawn more than one enemy per little area. But in this version, for whatever reason, you just run back and forth, and it's just silly, because it's not really much of a challenge, it's just... Oh, don't tell me he's back down there. Yes, but they won't spawn where you are, so just because this guy was here again... Wait, is he gone already? Oh no, there he is. Because just because he's here, right, doesn't mean that he'd be there if I was there. That's not how it works in this game. In the original, they could spawn on top of you, but in the remake, they spawn only where you're not, not where you're too. So, keep that in mind when you're doing this. It's just a weird little thing that the game does, but whatever. Get back here, you. Now, there should only be one left, and hopefully he's over here. Yes, he is. Now, what you gotta do is you just gotta fire these into here. Their hitbox is extremely generous, so don't worry about, honestly, having to aim. Also, they gave this challenge a five-star challenge, which I thought was kind of ridiculous for actually how easy it is. Wait. Did we already? Okay, I was about to say, there's no way we got them all on this one section if there's still another orb here, or thunderstone here. I don't actually know. I don't remember what they're called. Electric balls that power electric machinery, I guess? Oh yeah, you can also headbutt them for whatever reason. I think it's kind of funny. And this should be the last one, right? You just go patooey this in here, and boom! Challenge done! 
you, Spyro. I found this shiny thing mixed up with our lightning stones. Please, take it as a reward. Oh. <laughs> lightning stones, I guess, so we don't copy Pokemon. Because Pokemon was out at this time frame. Anyways, let's go on. The next two orbs are actually kind of the same challenge, but given from different people. And they actually require this, which needs 18 enemies, but we only have 14. We'll see what I mean about it being a pretty hefty amount of enemies. Considering enemies also don't drop gems, they're literally specifically just for the purpose of giving you power-ups. Oh, he actually hit me. Pretty snazzy. Our first damage, part three of the episode, not bad. Not like it'll do anything, so we're back at full health. Trying to do a Deathless one would be cool, though. I've done it before. There are times where I was, like, really good at speedrunning Spyro as well. And I haven't done that in a while, because I normally just do Let's Plays or just play casually for fun. Or, like, when my niece comes over, she'll like games like... She likes Spyro 3 because of the uh, baby dragons and how they have names and stuff, so... I'll do games like that without bum-rushing them and stuff. But, yeah, anyways, let's go grab the uh, talisman and stuff over here. We have the uh, Dio to open up this door. And then we can go and collect the gems that are lurking within here. And we can go talk to this guy. Thank you, Spyro. You've deactivated all of the electric barriers. Uh, we've been guarding this talisman from the gear grinders. Please, take it as a reward. Wait, are they force fields or electric barriers? I'm so confused. You guys keep changing your terminology for everything in these levels. Just like in Colossus, they'd say gates, and then they'd say doors, and gates and doors and gates and doors. It's like, well, is it gates or doors? Like, please. Please refrain from calling them multiple things, if they're supposed to be one thing or the other. So, use the supercharge to break these. In the original, you'd actually stop momentum entirely. And then the gems would spew out, but not in this one. So, you gotta use the supercharge to break these windmills. And then it'll slow down these windmills, which you can then hop across for the other orbs. Which is kinda cool, I guess. Still tedious, but whatever. Yeah, you can see the orb up there and some gems. And that's the first orb, I'm pretty sure. But, now you're probably wondering how we get up there, because we have no way up there. Well, see that windmill that we're kind of facing? Well, the camera wasn't facing, right there. We have to get that one, which is probably the most difficult part about this entire level, is literally hitting this windmill. Because it's so awkwardly placed. And you gain momentum really weird in this game. I wonder if I can kind of cheese it by, like, going around the long way. I'm pretty sure that's actually what you're supposed to do. But yeah, so technically you don't need to talk to him because he just tells you to go get to the other guys by hopping across the windmills. And then he'll say this is, I think, a four-star challenge, and then the second one's a five-star challenge. So we'll just do this. And just be patient if you need to be. We timed that just perfectly, though, so we didn't have to worry about it. And we can just go over here and grab our first of the orbs, which then opens up a whirlwind down below Spyro, to get up here. you have done well so far. You could have this little trinket for good luck. If you have any questions about shutting down the factory, just ask me. No, no, I don't. Thank you for the second orb, though. I appreciate it. The next glides get... Remember... Yeah, it is difficulty five. Which, by the way, I don't think warrants a... That was just me being dumb. Um, I don't think it warrants a five-star... Yeah. Like, you can technically die, I guess is why they made it difficult. Because it seems to be challenges where you can die are automatically boosted up in difficulty, even though the challenge itself is not actually that difficult. It's because, like, was that really any more difficult? Those windmills aren't going really any faster. This should also be the last win, though, for the skill point. Yep. There it is, and as long as that one's out, you should be able to make that. Also, once you shut down the factory, everything goes back to normal. And we got all the gems, and the factory's down, meaning we just 100% the level. Thanks for shutting down the factory. Here, I found this stuck between the gears. You can have it if you want. Thanks, Spike. And that should be level 100% complete. Nice. 
All orbs collect Yado. Level complete. Let's leave. Now we get to watch a beautiful cutscene. Now the adventure continues. You guys are turds. Anyways, thank you for the 400 gems. Bring me back to 900. We haven't hit over a thousand yet because the game is like, nah, but finally, in this episode, we will hit the thousand mark. Now, normally I'd say Aquaria Towers, but there is technically a very small level we can cram pack into this episode. And it's a speedway! So, we just talked to Alora here. Nice work. I think you need four orbs, which then opens up Ocean Speedway, the most boring of honestly any speedway in the history of Spyro. And that even includes uh, Enter the Dragonfly. Also, I don't get why this game loads levels way more fast than, or I guess way faster, <clears throat> than Spyro 1. Spyro 1 has the worst loading times, despite this game actually having cutscenes and, like, boss arenas and everything. And I don't know, it's just, it's a really weird thing that, that's, that Spyro, um... Oh, poop. I got suctioned into the water. That was that was me. Also, I could have probably shaved a few seconds off if I timed the uh, charging section a little better. The part where the getting the skill point will be hard is simply on those boats, because their pattern is a little hard to recognize right at first. And there we go. So I think we shaved, like, half a second off by doing it that way. I don't even know what we're killing. They sound like rats. I don't know. Oh, man. Hopefully, we don't screw this up and uh, everything goes according to plan here. No! We're gonna fail now because of me missing this. Okay, you know what? I don't know why, for whatever reason, um, we kept going above him. Do you see that? Every time I try and flame him, it would push me up. Also, once again, they did this stupid thing where, like, the, um, pictures up there, like, in the top left, for, like, whatever item you can complete, or are completing at the time, are stationary. They used to be animated in the originals. For this game being, you know, supposedly better, and also being huge gigabyte-wise, like, this game used to be, like, 80 gigs, and then, um... Oh my god. Okay, guys, this is not as difficult as I'm making it look. I'm just being an idiot. Also, my Xbox is kind of facing away from me, so the sensor for my controller is actually against, a, like, a shelf, because my TV takes up way too much of the TV stand, and I can't have my Xbox underneath, otherwise it would, like, overheat. And I have my PS3 on the edge of the, like, uh, like, stand that I have my TV on, so I can't put it there either. So, it sometimes... What is going... It's that one... It's... The hitboxes. The hitboxes are just weird in this game sometimes, I swear. Alrighty, let's try this for, what, the fourth time now? We're gonna get it this time. Fourth time's the charm, normally it's third time's the charm, but... Who cares about third time, you know? It's always the fourth time in the Nostalgia Scott cinematic universe. Yeah, that just sounded stupid. Ig ignore my tomfoolery, that just sounded dumb. Oh, that was... That was one of the most glorious kills I think I have ever seen in the history of Spyro. Woohoo! Now where's this last guy? There we go. Now we just gotta go for these ones, and we should be fine, right? Hopefully. At least these rings look kinda cool. 
They're like, kind of remind me of like, um, Atlantean type stuff. I don't even know why. And there we go, we got the skill point, even though I swear I messed up miserably. Now, we actually do have to retry again. And also, I forgot to say, if you want the achievement, just flame all these fish over here. But the orb is actually found right here. I guess now you think you're pretty good. Well, let's see if you're as good as the current champion. All right, Spyro, meet the course champion. In order to win the race, you must fly through all the rings. But beware, if Hunter flies through a ring first, the ring will start to shrink. Funny thing is, he has to fly through him first. You can't actually outspeed Hunter. And they have to turn green. And the fact that is they you don't you won't lose by them really shrinking. I don't think I've actually ever seen them shrink either. It would have been cool to be able to place Hunter with that ability on, because like that uh, that winged ability looks really cool. But sadly you don't get to play as Hunter in this game. In Spyro 3 you actually get to play as Hunter. In this game, Hunter doesn't really trust you yet, despite eventually becoming, like, your best friend outside of Sparks. Which is kind of interesting how that happens. Literally over the course of a game, which apparently is, like, a day or two in between. So, I don't know how or why that happens, and... Okay. Almost lost momentum there, because the low-hanging ceiling, but... Also, there's 20 of these rings we gotta fly through. That is nutty. I also have to record like 11 videos today, which is interesting, because I didn't record enough last week, because a lot of the games I was playing were really frustrating. So I decided to actually just, you know, take it easy, record them at my own pace. I'm going to be recording more into the Dragonfly, Wrath of Cortex, Warped, maybe Fairly Odd Parents as well, or maybe just the new game, like Cow the Kangaroo or something, I, I'm not, K.O name is spelled cow, but it's, it's pronounced K.O. Anyways, there we go. There's our orb. Great job, Spyro. That was some excellent flying. Thank you. And I think that does, that just does, it, just about does it, pardon me, for this uh, episode. In the original, by the way, I'd say if you uh, got the secret challenge. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. We upload uh, 12 p.m. MST and 5 p.m. MST every single day. And, uh, yeah, join the Discord and the uh, Patreon links below, and I'll see you guys all next time when we go and take on Aquaria Towers, the final level in this world that we can actually 100% complete. Bye-bye.